Hello, you wonderful people. So for today's video, I'm going to talk about the upcoming, you know, standalone Batman film uh, referred to simply as The Batman, which is interesting just because, you know, there was an animated series called The Batman. I'm also curious, like, there's probably comic books just referred to that as well. Either way, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, there's, like, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man comic book-wise, and obviously that translates into the movies as well, so it's not, like, it's that big of a deal, but nevertheless. So for this video, I want to talk about some of my thoughts about, you know, what it could be, what it should be, all this and that, just what's kind of running through my mind. So currently, there's a lot of stuff to kind of think about, like, especially on, like, the Batman front, in particular, the actor playing Bruce Wayne slash Batman, because potentially there isn't one still currently because there's the whole Ben Affleck thing because it's like things are saying he's out but then I'm reading other things are saying if he's out and it's like okay I get the feeling like he's a hundred percent out but maybe he's not I don't know I don't keep a hundred percent up to date to this stuff it's just stuff I've seen here and there some stuff maybe kind of think like he might still be potentially playing Batman going forward because it also comes down to a lot of things too of like how are they going to handle that going forward, that whole situation? Like, because the thought process has been like, we're going back in time, we're doing earlier day Batman stuff with this movie and just maybe other standalone Batman movies. Because Batman v Superman set up Batman as being like, oh, Bruce has been doing the Batman thing for a while now. That was always my justification for why he was kind of the way he was in Batman v Superman and kind of Justice League a little bit. It's just because, like, you get so tired. Like, you've been doing this Batman thing for a long time and it just kind of finally took its toll on him in certain regards so so you know it's going to be interesting how they play around with the timeline with this because they have a lot that they could like throw in there because it's interesting and I'm gonna save this conversation for another video but obviously like as you can tell like the DC uh movies timeline I don't want to say DCEU because once again I know that's not like the official name but maybe it's just be the easiest way to kind of refer to things the timeline is kind of all over the place in certain regards because when you look at the Wonder Woman movies obviously they bounce around in time because even Wonder Woman 2 is going to be taking place in 1984 so that kind of gives them a lot of wiggle room to kind of do what they want to with the Batman stuff because what I'm curious about with this Batman movie is like are they going to do like a year one storyline because if you're once again I talked about this when I was talking about the TV show Gotham because for its final season that's what kind of storyline they're kind of going with uh, if you're once again unfamiliar it's basically uh Bruce's first year as Batman I'm curious like how they're going to handle that like because I don't know if they do like a full-blown origin story. Because Batman v Superman was set up to be like, yeah, you already know about Batman. You literally just watched the Christopher Nolan movies a couple years ago. So, you know, I'm curious how they'll handle it. I'd assume it's like, oh, he's been Batman for a little while uh, type of situation. I don't. I doubt they'd go into like a full-blown origin story. I don't know. Because you also have to think about it, too, because that's what Batman Begins was all about, too. So I'm just curious, like, how they plan on handling it. What kind of movie will it be? Because that was the whole thing, too. Like, originally, like, you know, the thought was going to be like, oh, it's going to be a detective movie, which I think would be very interesting because that's a side of Batman I feel like I don't see a lot in a lot of mediums, in particular movies. Like, once again, like, I don't remember a lot of Batman movies, especially, like, the earlier ones, whether it be George Clooney, Val Kilmer, uh... Michael Keaton, like a lot of those Batman's kind of blurred in my head because I don't really remember, like I remember the movies, but I don't remember them as Batman. And just like what Bruce Wayne slash Batman was like in those movies. Even the Christopher Nolan ones, you know, Christian Bale's Batman, I still don't really remember because I have not really sat down and rewatched all those movies, you know? And the whole situation with Ben Affleck's Batman, it's like I feel like we still don't got enough to really know because Every time we've seen him, he's kind of had to share the screen with other people, so it's never been he's the main focus of it, you know? To me, the only things I ever really see really heavily play into the detective aspect of Batman's, or at the very least that stay in my mind, are the video games, whether it be like the Arkham games or even uh, the Telltale Batman uh, game kind of played heavily into like the whole like investigation angle. So I think it'd be pretty dope to kind of see more of that side of Batman, considering he is like the greatest detective ever, but I don't know if that's the direction they'd really go. Like, I would assume it could lend itself nicely to a movie, but, you know, I mean, what do I know? I don't really know what would appease an audience, what would appease a Batman audience. I'm also curious about the villain, because I remember a while back that they were going to say the villain of the standalone Batman movie was going to be Deathstroke, played by Joe, and I'm going to butcher his name, Magniello. I'm sure I'm butchering it, uh, that he was going to be playing Deathstroke. So I was like, I'm curious, is that still a 
thing. Also makes you wonder like what other villains they would put, pick for. Like, is he just going to be the only villain? Or are there going to be other villains kind of sprinkling in? Because all the other Batman movies have had multiple, like at least like, you know, with the Christopher Nolan ones, they each had multiple villains. So I guess as long as it's not too much, I'm curious to see where they'd go with a lot of that. Because cause it's, it's that same thing I brought up about Spider-Man, like, how many of their villains are you going to really use because a lot of them have been used in the past. You take someone like Poison Ivy who hasn't been used in a Batman movie in a very long time. Uh, Mr. Freeze. Scarecrow was used in the Christopher Nolan one. So was Ra's al Ghul slash Ra's al Ghul. But that could still be used just because that the whole League of Assassins slash League of Shadows hat plays a role in Bruce's story, so that could still end up coming back in some shape or form. Bane is, you know, so those villains have been used recently, so I don't know if they'd be quick to reuse them in some shape or form. I'm sure that's why they're going with someone like Deathstroke, because he hasn't popped up in any Batman movie. Because you also have to think about it, too, because, like, a lot of, like, not all of them, but a good chunk of the Suicide Squad roster are Batman villains, like Deadshot, Joker, Harley, Katana maybe? I don't know, because I only know her because of Arrow, but even beyond Arrow, the TV show, I don't really know that much about her character, so I don't know who's villain she typically, because I know Captain Boomerang is a Flash villain. Oh yeah, there's also Killer Croc too, so like that's other, you know, villains you can, you know, you've set up in Suicide Squad that you can kind of trail back and get them introduced in some of the, like the standalone Batman movies. Like I said, it also comes down to what they're going to do timeline-wise. I'd assume just with everything kind of being where it is now, present day, that they would kind of jump back in time. So, Because it also, you know, plays into whether or not Ben Affleck's coming back or not. Because if he is, it's like, oh, he'll play present day slash future Batman while someone, maybe, you know, a younger actor or whatever would play a younger Bruce Wayne or Batman. Or maybe that'd be their way of trickling him out, maybe. Because it's like, oh, we focus on this younger Batman and then we just maybe makeup and stuff, maybe CGI or whatever, and maybe age him up a bit to kind of fit like where Batman is currently in a uh, DC movie timeline. So I don't know. Those are just kind of what's kind of rolling through my head right now. Because like I said, it, you know, that most likely will be the route they go down of like going to the past because there's a lot of history that they can't feel in, especially because of the whole Joker angle too. Because there was that running theory back then that I've talked about before where it was like, oh yeah, that Joker, you know, from Suicide Squad, it's actually Jason Todd. Potentially, I guess, rather than going down like a Red Hood route, he actually became Joker instead. And then you know, that also ties into the whole like you know Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie because I don't know where all that really stands and how that's all going to really ultimately connect but like I said these are just kind of my thoughts running through my head ultimately my question to you guys is what are your thoughts about the situation what do you want slash what do you expect to see from the Batman movie but not just that but also going forward with Batman with this whole continuity because I don't think they're undoing anything they'll most likely just add to it to kind of fill in the blanks essentially just let me know what you're thinking and how you feel but really that's all I want to talk about in this video today next time we meet be happy be safe we'll let you the force and enjoy it good day and good